Have you ever pulled up to a gas station, confidently rolled down your window, popped the fuel door release, only to realize the pump's on the other side? Cue the awkward repositioning, possibly a three-point turn, and maybe a silent hope that nobody saw you. It's a small annoyance, but it begs the question, why isn't there a universal side for fuel doors? Why do some cars have them on the left, others on the right? Is it just random? Surprisingly, it's not. There are actually several layers to this puzzle, from engineering decisions to market trends and even subtle behavioral insights about us as drivers. Let's dig into this curious detail most of us have encountered, but never fully questioned, right here on History of Simple Things. First, let's talk about what the fuel door actually is. It's a small flap, usually spring-loaded or latch-controlled, that protects the gas cap and fuel filler neck from dirt, debris, and yes, prying hands. It's simple in design, but not arbitrary in placement. Whether it's tucked behind the driver or passenger side, that decision was made intentionally. There's no global regulation that mandates a specific side for fuel doors, which is why you see such variation. Some manufacturers consistently place it on one side across all models, while others switch it up depending on the type of car or even its market region. And no, the country of origin doesn't automatically determine the side, although that's a common belief. A popular theory is that the fuel door is placed on the driver's side for convenience. After all, who wants to walk around the vehicle to refuel, especially in bad weather? And this does hold water, particularly in countries like the United States, where self-service is the norm. For American drivers, having the fuel door on the left just feels natural. You park, step out, and the pump's right there. But here's the thing. In countries where cars drive on the left side of the road, like the UK or Japan, the driver's side is on the right. So, would it make more sense for the fuel door to be on that side in those countries? Well, sometimes it is, but not always. That brings us to the next layer of the mystery. Car manufacturers often develop design philosophies that stick around for decades, for example, many German automakers like BMW and Audi tend to place the fuel door on the passenger side. Why? Partly because in Germany, where drivers refuel themselves and safety is a consideration, stepping away from traffic to refuel on the passenger side feels safer. On the other hand, Japanese automakers often favor the driver's side, possibly because of narrower streets and an emphasis on minimizing driver effort. These tendencies aren't hard rules, but they help shape expectations. When a brand establishes consistency across its lineup, customers get used to it. And changing that, even for logic's sake, risks confusing loyal drivers. Now here's something most people don't think about. Manufacturing efficiency. Car factories are complex ecosystems with strict production flows. The placement of the fuel filler neck depends on where it's easiest to route the piping from the fuel tank, which is usually located beneath the rear seats or trunk area. Depending on the model's layout, placing the filler neck on one side might be significantly easier or cheaper than placing it on the other. Add to that the reuse of components across different models and platforms, and it becomes clear that the decision isn't always about driver convenience. It's about engineering and cost. If a manufacturer can use the same fuel system layout across multiple models, that's a big win in terms of efficiency. Safety plays a quieter but important role too. If there's ever a rear-end collision, Engineers want to minimize the risk of the fuel filler neck rupturing. That means positioning it where it's least likely to get crumpled or pinched. In some cars, depending on the internal structure and crash zones, 
one side might simply be safer. Design symmetry also enters the conversation. In some sports cars or luxury vehicles, the aesthetics of body lines or even the placement of exhaust pipes might nudge designers to put the fuel door where it looks best, or least disrupts the car's silhouette. There's also this recurring myth floating around that fuel doors are placed on the side opposite to traffic, so drivers can refuel from the safer, curb-facing side of the car. It sounds logical, especially in high-traffic countries, but this theory doesn't hold up universally. In the US, for example, cars drive on the right side of the road, and yet both left and right-sided fuel doors are common. In Japan, where cars drive on the left, the same inconsistency applies. If safety via curbside fueling were a real factor, we'd see uniformity by region, but we don't. It seems that while this idea may occasionally influence design, it's far from a global standard. Here's where it gets interesting. Electric vehicles. With no fuel tank, manufacturers get more freedom in where to place the charging port. And yet, we're seeing a similar lack of standardization. Some EVs have their ports in the front, others on the rear quarter panels, and a few in odd places like the grill. It's like the fuel door debate all over again. As EVs become the norm, we might finally see a push toward some kind of industry-wide consensus, especially as public charging infrastructure matures. But for now, even with EVs, the age-old question of which side is it on isn't going away. So, next time you find yourself at the pump, looking sheepishly across your hood because the fuel door is not where you expected it, don't feel bad. You're not alone, and you're definitely not wrong. The side of the fuel door is the result of decades of decisions by engineers, designers, marketers, and yes, even safety regulators. It's a balancing act of form, function, convenience, cost, and a touch of chaos. It might seem like a small detail, but like so many things in cars, it tells a surprisingly big story. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.